How do you guys? I am Trooper the Dork and welcome back to, you guessed it, another smite build. This time we're going to be doing the Meta God, who is absolutely destroying in the Pro League solo lane right now, and that is King Arthur. This is a build that is designed for players looking to approve that King Arthur, or more specifically, help boost their rank by tackling the solo lane. Now I'm going to start off by saying that this build is fairly universal and will work against most of who you come across and will rarely need changing. It is a combination of Pro League players builds and a little bit of my opinion, you know how it is, got to vary it up a little bit. Uh, first off, we're going to go for the Warrior's Blessing, Chalice of Healing and 5 Multi Potions. Now I'd usually recommend only buying 3, as 5 is very over excessive, but I simply brought 5 here to help me last a little longer in the solar lane with mana cost due to the fact I was facing Shock and his passive. But yeah, usually 3 mana potions, sorry, 3 Multi Potions, Chalice and Warrior's Blessing. The initial start to the lane phase wasn't anything particularly interesting or diverse. Uh, we both decided to farm minions rather than focusing on each other, which was fine with me. That suits my early Arthur until I get my abilities online perfectly fine. Yeah, I allowed him to charge up his passive, but to be honest, he wasn't really a threat with just his one, and I wasn't either. So yeah, I decided to get a couple licks in, and that was pretty much it for the initial phase. Next up is Reinforced Boots. This is due to the fact that King Arthur already has an insane amount of damage output from his abilities when used in unison and correctly. He doesn't particularly need the damage increase that Warrior Tabai offers, so the extra protections and the crowd control reduction that Reinforced Boot offers will certainly aid him a whole lot more than Warrior Tabai, which a lot of people always tend to use. I wouldn't recommend it as much as Reinforced Boots. Uh, this is also due to the fact of what is to come later in the build. Reinforced Boots harmonise with this a lot better. Uh, in this particular engagement here, you see that I have my boots online and I begin to actually hurt this shack. That ultimate ability hits quite hard and I begin to win lane quite nicely here. Next up, we have the Stone of Gaia. This helps King Arthur to recover 0.5% of his health constantly, which when combined with Chalice can result in some very nice sustain, my dudes. It also greatly increases his overall health by 400 or more and makes him immune to a knock-up every... 45 seconds at least once. Sorry, I nearly read that wrong. I nearly read it as 45 times every second, which would be a bit insane. Uh, it's a very solid item that harmonizes with his kit very nicely due to his whirlwind ability in both forms. In terms of lane here, I successfully get a whole load of tower damage off until it's around 40% health left. Managed to retreat back from the Vulcan Shack gank, where me and Fenrir managed to clean up here and successfully help me secure lane. Here we have our very first team fight of the match and oh boy it goes well with our team coming out on top overall. I initiate the gank by using my ultimate upon the Horus in the hope that I get a stage 1 back throughout the encounter. Tsukiyomi attempts the gank from behind but Ephemeral ult shuts him down quicker than you can say anti disestablishmentarianism anti disestablishmentarianism Freya then decides to lift me up which gives me and Athena a chance to shut down the Horus which then allows an absolute team cleanup. Neath very nicely eats the Vulcan's ass, and Isis cleans Freya for an almost team wipe. McClunky. Now when we return back to the base, we have accumulated enough gold to get King Arthur really up and running. We build Gladiator's shield next, followed by Genji's guard, which really makes us a threat on the battlefield. Gladiator's shield is going to be an additional 25% damage from the total amount of protections you build on each ability utilised. What that essentially means is, if you build full tank, like I have been doing, you're going to get 25% of those total protections returned as damage. This item alone is the reason we are able to go full tank build. That's not including the insane statistics the item also offers us. Genji's Guard is going to offer us more protections in the form of magical protection this time, and also provides us with a little more cooldown to keep those abilities coming thick and fast for the Beyblade boy. Finally, in terms of the main build, we have Void Shield, and this is really going to add some extra damage into your build. The protections add to Gladiator's Shield, 
and the damage is increased by the item so you're getting damage from two different sources so yeah it's a great way to end off Typically, I'd recommend replacing your Warrior's Blessing that you purchased at the start with Mantle of Discord due to how strong the item is within the late game, but it really is dependent on how the fight is going for your team at this point. For example, if you need anti-heal, you have the options of Pestilence and Contagion to help shut down those dweebs extra hard. But yeah, that, at that point, it's your call on what to do, but typically, I choose Mantle of Discord as you can see in this game. Uh, that's pretty much all I have for the King Arthur build folks, I hope you guys enjoyed, if you did be sure to leave a like, if you found it informative be sure to leave a like, share it with your friends, I'm honestly trying so so hard to get this out there, and if they're informative then yeah I'm doing something right, uh, let me know recommendations on gods I should tackle, that's pretty much all I have for you guys, be sure to take care, and yeah I'll see you in the next video, see you later.